Hello and welcome to the original, the only podcast of its kind for the Quantum Grammar Shoot, a podcast that talks about the grammar technology known as Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsing Syntax Grammar, i.e. Quantum Grammar, and how it relates to everyday life and current events. And I am your host, Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. This is a podcast of opinion where I share my thoughts on a psychological level of how one would use this technology navigating through everyday now space and other related subjects. Hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to this inaugural edition of the video version of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast. The platform that I use, the main platform for the podcast, Anchor, has offered me the option of doing video podcasts. So I'm going to try that. It's just recording a video in one take of the podcast. So it's the same format, uh, same terms and conditions apply, only it's a video. And I do have a couple things to say and discuss. Podcasts usually go about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Uh, this will probably be a little bit shorter. What I'm looking to do is to create content that I can post on different platforms. So hopefully, be, be this being a video, I can post this on YouTube as well and start a For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast playlist on my YouTube channel to keep some consistent content coming out over there. Because life circumstances and so on and so forth um, you know, sometimes dictates that I can't get content out on there in a timely fashion. Uh, I do have the volition and the vision of creating, continuing to create my Parts of Speech playlist. For the beginners out there who have questions about quantum grammar, that would be the place they would start. I have one video finished for that. And I do have some other things to discuss on there as well having to do with the grammar and syntax. What I'd like to start off this inaugural edition of the video podcast is I'm going to do a throwback to when I first started this years ago. And by years ago, I mean, I started at the beginning of 2017. But what, what really galvanized me to do this, and I'll use an analogy. When one is into health and fitness, Here's the thing, when you go into a store and you look at the ingredients on a label, food ingredients, you will see that there are things in there that are plain to see that they are poison. They're not good for human consumption. GMOs would be one thing. Uh, sugars, extreme sugars, processed sugars, corn syrups, coloring agents, sometimes preserving agents, things like that. Not to mention the ingredients and some of the things that are being suggested or even mandated for people to put into their bodies. There's not so good things in those uh, materials. So what happens? What do you do if you want to take care of yourself as best you can, take care of your vessel? You find out that there are these poison particles, these particles of negation in the foods, so you cut them out. You start eating healthier. You try and find in, uh, food products that are pure or have more purity to them and less particles of negation in them because this is what helps your vessel to run in a clean and efficient manner so that you can do what you need to do. And you're not walking around tired and sick and poisoned all the time. Well, this is the analogy I used years ago when I made some of my first videos um, regarding diet and language. Language is the same thing just about because there are particles of negation in the language. And it's up to us as individuals to find out what these particles are 
Anyone can easily do this using etymologyonline.com. That's just one source. There are many other sources, multiple sources available to everyone out there. A lot of people just aren't willing to put the work in. But it's there for you. And so I, as a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar tutor, I teach people how to do this, how to purify the grammar using this technology and to take those particles of negation out and also to identify those particles of negation when a trespass is being perpetrated upon an individual. And to point them out, kind of like how some people do with food companies or, or, or whatever, they'll go to court and say, you're tr purposely trying to poison us or whatever, and then you'll see the big lawsuits Kind of a joke trying to use the the court system to get anything remotely related to the fiction sense of justice is about as say insane as i can think of anything that i can think of in any case that's what happens with this technology you can do that with this technology you have to learn it to, in order to do so so an example I'm going to use is I'm going to parse the word no. Now, as you may know, K-N-O-W, the word no, N-O, has two particles in it. Now, if you look it up, it's going to say it has one syllable. Okay, but there are two letters. Particles can be syllables, they can be letters depends upon the scenario, the context. And in this context, I'm talking about letters with regards to etymology. Now I'm going to show you something on my iPad here. So as you see, if you can read this, there are two particles to this word. No, adverb, not in any degree, not at all. From N-E, not, no, plus A, which means ever in this context. The first element is from Proto-Germanic N-E, also source of Old Norse, Old Frisian, Old High German, Gothic, not, a particle of negation. Proto-Indo-European, any, not. The second element, the O, Proto-Germanic, A-I-W-I, -I, extended form of pi root, A-I-W, vital force, life, long life, eternity. So it basically means no means no life, no vital force. That's what that means. But what does yes mean? Let's look it up. Both of these classified in the fiction as adverbs, by the way. So yes comes from Old English, G-I-S-E, so be it. Two particles in yes as well. And then the next part, particle, S-I, is be it. From the Proto-Indo-European root S-I, awkward stem root of E-S, which means to be. And if we look up B-E, we know that that is tangible contract. To exist, to happen. B 
P-H-E-U-E, -E, Proto-Indo-European root, to exist, to grow. So we have a tangible contract with that. So basically, no means a non-tangible contract, and yes means tangible contract. I'm being very general here. But one could think of things in, in these terms. When you think of particles of negation, they're nothing. There's no vital force behind them. They're negatives. You can't prove a negative in this now space juncture. Yes is to exist, to grow. It's, it's positive performance. And that is what correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar can enable you to do if you choose to learn it. I get a lot of these people who email me. They don't ask grammar questions. They don't want, really want to know about the grammar. They want to know how they can become sovereign. They want to know how to get a claim of the live life. When I understand why they would come from that position because of since, especially since the summer of 2018, the propaganda that has come out with relation to quantum grammar by very public personas has really modified, and I use the word modified in the literal sense, the purpose the idea of the purpose of this grammar and how it works. It's been modified from what existed before 2018, i.e. prior to when Colin David Eiffel, when Colin Miller passed away. The idea behind it has been modified. It's been changed. And in my humble opinion, these individuals out there in the public have completely taken this technology and immersed it in the fiction. It appears as though it's something powerful and potent, but they are selling an ideology and they're not selling the practicality. What I'm trying to explain is that in this channel, well, my YouTube channel specifically, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. The grammar technology is on there. You can learn the entire system of technology, grammar technology on this YouTube channel that I've created for you. And you can get ideas on how I've used it and how it relates to my life through this podcast for the quantum grammar shoot. I really stay away from the BS and the drama of what those other individuals promulgate. The reason being, if you can't prove something to someone, then it's an opinion. You can go back to those early Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller videos, and he says the same thing. And this is what got me thinking. If you can prove something to yourself, if you can know it and prove it, and then prove it to somebody else, certify it to someone else, now we have a fact. But if I tell you, for example, if I'm trying to sell you on an idea of something, as I mentioned earlier, if I sell you an, on an idea that I can go down the street and uh, this instrument right here that I have in my hand, that I can use this and, um, I don't know, I can start a car with it because this technology is awesome and I can start any car with this technology. It doesn't matter if it's my car, your car, anybody else's car. I can do it just by hitting this button right here. And I've been filmed doing it. People have seen me do it. I have witnesses who have seen me do it. But of course, that footage, that those videos... Are classified. Can't, I can't share them with you uh, 
uh, because if you knew about this technology, the system and governments would be nullified because you could start anything with this technology. You could start an airplane, you could start a tank, any kind of machine you can start with this thing just by hitting this button. So the government doesn't want you to know that. So you're never going to see these videos of me starting cars with this technology. However, I have witnesses and they can tell you. You can email them or, but of course I'm not going to leave the email in my description. I'm not going to leave any contact information. All you're going to hear are talking mouths saying that they saw me do this. Do you believe me? This is about, I mean, I don't know if this is a poor example or not. This is about the extent of how these talking heads, these personas portray the grammar. They make these claims that they've walked into this place or that place and done this, that, and a third, and that there's video evidence of it. But you never see the video evidence. You can never see it. It's not available. It's classified. And there's witnesses, but you can't talk to them unless you pay to talk to them. And if you want to be able to do those things that these individuals are claiming, you have to pay to get the paperwork to even start the journey to do it. If you want to be free, you have to pay some money so you can get this particular document with this particular individual's thumbprint and autograph on it so that you can begin to be free. In other words, you can be free as long as you bend the knee to me. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, I don't mean that literally. I never asked that of anyone. I would never. I navigate on a geometric level playing field of contract. Rule one, rule equal. I don't claim titles to put myself above or below anyone. And I don't put anyone above or below me. That's what you're doing when you take out the particles of negation in a word, when you parse words. When you put a particle of negation in a word, it unlevels the geometric level playing field. You're taking away from something. You're negating something. It can almost be used in the same context as war negates contract. Because you're forcing someone to do something. Whether it's in nascience, when they don't know there's a particle of negation in the word. Or whether they know that something is not correct something does not agree with them and they don't consent to it, but they're forced to do it anyways. So maybe some people want to be free, but they don't want to bend the knee. What then? If you are serious about learning correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I'm talking about the grammar because this is the basis, the foundation, from which everything else will spring if you decide to do this. If you learn the grammar and get a basic rudimentary closure on it, you, yourself, can become autonomous, be your own authority, create your own claim of the live life, your own sea pass sea treaty, your own fate writ volition claim, or any other document you want to create. Contract using correct sentence structure. You can use it or not. I mean, it's a tool to put on your tool belt. As I'm speaking to you right now, I'm using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, plain English, i.e. fiction babble. And I'm here to be understood, not misunderstood. And if you and I are communicating and you follow those principles of rule one, rule equal, peace, neutrality, honor and grace, you're here to understand me. You're here to comprehend me. You're here to cognize me. Think about those three words for a minute, just as an example. Understand, comprehend, cognize. Only one of those words is positive performance. The other two contain particles of negation. Which ones? Understand. Particles of negation and understand. First of all, you 
N means no. It's vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. The ing at the end is a particle of negation because it's a modifier. It's a gerund. Comprehend. You take those particles apart. C-O-M. Okay, that means together, but then you have P-R-E, which is a particle of negation. P-R-E means no, same as P-R-O, P-R-I. And then you have cognize. Cognize is the positive performance word out of those three. So it's like looking at different types of, I don't know, apples or peppers. Okay, let's take those mini peppers you can get at the produce section of a supermarket. You get mini peppers, they're very small. Well, I'm starting to see peppers, mini peppers that are huge bulbous looking things. They have particles of negation in them because they've been injected with GMOs or, or whatever they do to, to grow those things the way they are, or even fruits. Berries. I've seen strawberries that are super huge. It's crazy. It's unreal, which means no, no contract. <laughs> so if you're serious about this grammar, you want to get those particles of negation out of your life, feel free to study my YouTube channel or I do provide confidential correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar workshops. You can apply for those at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get back to you. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where you and I can talk about what you want to do with it and if the workshop would be correct for you and your lifestyle. Other than that, thanks for watching this first episode of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot video podcast, and I'll see you next time.